Welcome to another Seeing with Stars podcast. I'm Steph Johnson. Let's get started with this podcast because we are in an age of space discovery. Yes, Pluto has entered Aquarius and various other combinations of planets also indicate this era is about to take off. So what happens in the world of astrology? In ancient times, there were seven main planets if you include the sun and moon. And yet astrology was very complicated. It's a complex science with all sorts of calculations, algorithms and interpretations. Traditionally, philosophers and teachers studied astrology. Think of Plato, Placidus and Ptolemy, just to name a few. And so for centuries, these ancient intellectuals, astronomers and the world at last, believed that Saturn was the edge of the universe. Then in 7081, on March 13th, a British German astrologer, William Herschel, discovered Uranus. Now Uranus is the planet of discovery, shocks, innovation. So imagine the worldwide shockwave that went around when there's a planet that's further out The universe is bigger than what we thought. It was probably the same surprise that came for many people when they went from seeing the earth as being flat to realising that it was round. Maybe even bigger because there's more out there. Uranus says there's more out there. Now a lot of the discoveries around that time were aided by the advancing technology of the telescope. And so soon stars were being catalogued with greater precision In fact, William Herschel's sister, Caroline, played a big part in this, in the details that's required. Astronomical cycles were being clarified and the universe was really opening up from that time. Then Ceres, the first asteroid, was discovered in 1801. And this is what I'm going to talk about today, asteroids. Do they have an effect on your birth chart? Why wouldn't they? Ceres has now been upgraded to being a dwarf planet, just as Pluto has been downgraded. And if anyone has had a big Pluto transit, they will know that there is a definite effect on your life as an individual, not to mention the world. But this does raise a bit of a query in the astrological world, because there are currently more than one million known asteroids in our solar system. Now these are the rocky remnants, and sometimes they are called minor planets, but they're the ancient leftovers from the early formation of our solar system, which is, according to the scientists, about 4.6 billion years ago. Now most of these celestial wanderers can be found orbiting the sun within the main asteroid belt, which is situated between the orbits of the planet Mars and the planet Jupiter. These asteroid sizes vary significantly. The largest asteroid is Vesta. She has a diameter of about 329 miles or 530 kilometres. And then we get the smaller ones that measure less than 33 feet or 10 metres. Now, not all of these asteroids have been named, but, and I'm going to give a precise figure here according to the latest statistics, 614,690 have enough information to be given numbered designations. These are the ones that primarily orbit the Sun between Mars and Jupiter. So there's an asteroid belt, but can we see them? Well, there's only one of them, again Vesta, because she's largest probably, and uh, she is normally visible to the naked eye, only when favourably positioned. So she can be seen in the dark skies. Every now and then, small asteroids passing close to Earth may also be visible to the naked eye for a short period of time. So while there are more than a million known asteroids, most of them remain hidden from our direct view. And they quietly orbit the sun in their celestial dance. So how do we know which ones to pick? Astrologers have various methods. I mean, you can list many of them. You can list the largest ones. It's a bit like the stars. There's, you know, with stars, there are different categories. With stars, you can have the four royal Persian stars, the brightest stars. 
But as I said, astrology is complex and the best way to start is to start simple, I think. So I might do more on asteroids in another podcast, but in this one I want to look at the four major asteroid goddesses because these ones do play significant roles in your birth chart. So you can look to see where they are in your birth chart. If you have one of my apps, the Astro Gold app, you can also look up the information to see what it says about these four that I'm going to mention, what they are like in the sign and in the house position, and perhaps also to other aspects to the planets, to your birth chart. Now, just a little bit of astrology here, a little bit more complex if you like. If one of these asteroids is very, very close to your sun, moon or ascendant, then they're going to be quite significant in your chart. There are astrologers who use all sorts of different techniques. I liken it to languages. Some people speak French, some people speak German, some people speak Chinese, but they're all speaking the same language. Well, with astrologers, they use different techniques and I think they get to the same point. Some astrologers don't use the modern planets, Uranus, Neptune and Pluto. Some astrologers use the modern planets plus the asteroids, so it can be quite different. But in this podcast, we're going to talk about the four main asteroid goddesses. Now, I also think there's a real rising of the feminine at the moment, the divine feminine. And if you think about the ancient and even the modern planets, not counting the dwarf planets, then only one is named after a woman, and that's Venus. And in all my research, and please correct me if you, or let me know if you've discovered something, I cannot find why that planet was named Venus. But one of them, if some say it might be because she rose and she looked very beautiful in the morning sky and the night sky. The four first discovered asteroids are all asteroid goddesses. So let's start with the first one. The first known asteroid named Ceres was discovered by the Italian astronomer Giuseppe Piazzi on January the 1st, 1801. He observed Ceres from the Palermo Astronomical Observatory in Sicily. I can't begin to imagine what his excitement must be. As a journalist, I used to have to stand for hours waiting for some celebrity or somebody important to turn up, and then eventually they would turn up. But those hours of boredom where you were just sitting and waiting, and I found that very difficult with all the fire in my chart, must be nothing compared to astronomers who spend hours and hours and hours at a telescope, searching both with the naked eye and through a telescope, for something or something different or following the pattern. So very exciting in 1801. And she was initially, Ceres was initially orbiting in the asteroid belt situated between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter, as I said earlier. And she was initially considered a new planet. Then she was called an asteroid. And then later, recently later, as she was reclassified as a dwarf planet due to her size and characteristics. So Ceres was named after the Roman goddess of fertility and agriculture, and she represents, many astrologers say, motherhood and family relationships, but I think she really represents food, nourishment, and transitions in a female's life. I think she also looks at the nurturing qualities of food. And yes, I guess that traditionally motherhood was seen as the nurturer through food, which is why Ceres was seen to be the mother and the nurturer. Also seen as that very much connected to the natural world. And I think Ceres is very much connected to agriculture in the, in the old-fashioned sense. So slow food, not that fast food or modern uh, technology or GMO or any of that. It's the real nurturing qualities of caregiving through food that's natural. So I think the natural world of flora and food and and plants is very much connected with Ceres. So if Ceres is prominent in your birth chart, then you are going to have those qualities big time and they're going to be important to you. And you may also be seeking those qualities from other people. Now the next asteroid that was then discovered was Pallas Athena. 
and she was discovered by the German astronomer and physician Wilhelm Olbers on March the 28th, a year later, 1802. So this was, again, a really significant finding following the discovery of Ceres the years before. Pallas is the asteroid of wisdom and knowledge. She symbolises creative thinking, strategy and the arts. She does have some healing and mental accomplishments, but she's also known for tact, diplomacy and courage. When you have Pallas prominently in your birth chart, then you are likely to really find an affinity for having a balanced approach and looking at the feminine type of arts in the world. So you can solve problems through intelligence and strategy, but you also have that cultural aspect to thinking. So you might be very, very intelligent, but it's going to be more of a leaning towards cultural intelligence, if you like, and the arts, rather than science and technology and those sorts of things. So diplomacy and strategy, you can be very good at that. For somebody who's doing policy, it's going to be great for that because you've got that ability to think strategically. Having a balanced approach is going to be very, very important. So if you have Pallas somewhere prominent in your chart, things like fairness and things keeping things in balance and perhaps also not the other side of it is not liking things to be out of balance. These sorts of things are going to be very important to you. So it's not got a nurturing quality. As you can see, like Ceres, Pallas Athena and Ceres are quite different. Both aspects of femininity, though. These are asteroid goddesses. Now, I have my favourite asteroids. And I tell you, as I've said before, there are more than a million. But you can also look at your chart and if you've got the software that I produce, Solar Fire or Astro Gold, not so much Astro Gold that has many asteroids, it's a good place to start. With Solar Fire, if you want to really explore asteroids in the whole world and looking at all the different ones, then you can do that with Solar Fire. But I have my favourites. Juno is one, Ceres is one, and Vesta is the other. But let's go on to Juno. Juno was the third asteroid ever discovered, and she was observed again by a German astronomer, Carl Ludwig Harding, on September the 1st, 1804, so a couple of years later. And Juno was named after the Roman goddess who was associated with commitment and marriage. If you know anything about the mythology of Juno and Zeus, then perhaps you might think, like me, that Juno stays committed when maybe she should have walked away. But that's not who Juno is. She's committed. So partnerships, fairness and compromise are going to be important if you have Juno prominent in your birth chart. She likes a balance of power in relationships. Juno's not a pushover, though. She might stick it out, but she'll stick it out with attitude because she will stand up for making things fair and right. And she will warn us when there are inequalities. So I would look at Juno in my chart and see what's important in terms of relationships. What side of my marriage is important to me? Is, is it the communication? Is it the sharing of money? Perhaps it's the co-parenting? Could be the sex. I mean, of course, all these things are important. But if Juno is placed somewhere in your chart, it's going to say, this is where commitment to my marriage and the sharing of values is very important to me. And this is where I need everything to be fair and right. And this is where I'm going to really work if they're not fair and right. So let's get to the next asteroid, Vesta. Vesta was discovered, again by a German astronomer, Heinrich Wilhelm Matthias Olbers. He also discovered Pallas. So there must have been a very exciting times, very exciting times in Germany around that time with the discovery of these asteroids. And as I said before, a lot of this was linked too to Will William Herschel, who moved from Germany to England and really helped under the auspices of King George III really helped with the development of telescopes and there was a lot of advancement in that area at the time. Vesta was discovered on March the 29th, 1807. 
and she's named after the virgin goddess of home and hearth in Roman mythology. So Vesta is the goddess of the hearth and the sacred flame. Now this is literally the hearth in the home. So where is the hearth in the home? Often until recently it was the kitchen. Now it could be your outdoor patio, but this is the hearth of the home, but it's also the sacred flame within us. So she symbolizes devotion, sacrifice and commitment. And she also symbolizes that balance between sexuality and spirituality. So there is a magic associated with Vesta. I like the fact that I think Vesta really is linked to magic, but in the sense of magic is something that may be a natural phenomenon that we just don't know about yet. For instance, when people first saw a match struck, they would have thought that was magic if they hadn't have known how it was done and the science behind it. So I think if you have Vesta strongly placed in your chart, you have a knowing or an ability to discover what is magic, that there's a sacredness behind this. So Vesta also sparks, and you see all the um, analogies or the metaphors for flames and fire, etc. But Vesta sparks in us that real desire to learn more, and not just learn more on a physical level, but to learn more spiritually. Vesta has a depth to learning and discovering, but in a spiritual sense. So think of Carl Jung. Carl Jung had Vesta on his son. So you can see that correlation there. So that's the four main asteroid goddesses. That's where I would start if I was interested in researching or looking further into the asteroids. Of course, there are many of them. And we need to remember that these asteroid goddesses really add depth and nuance to our astrological charts. And they really help reveal different facets of our lives and our personalities. I hope this has whet your appetite for a little bit more discovery into the feminine, divine energy of the asteroid goddesses. I'm Steph Johnson. Thanks for listening.